Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be part two of the 456 gears on my channel. So today we're doing the the math. So kind of showing you guys on paper how that uh, how that wheel torque has increased. We'll do that first, and then we're actually going to going to go to a measured miles per gallon loop. So I'll fill up, run a set course, and fill up again, and we'll see what kind of gas mileage I'm getting on the freeway with 456 gears. Let's go. So before I dive into the math that I did here, I just wanted to give a little disclaimer. I would not have known how to do these calculations myself. I actually saw this video that Engineering Explained did, and I used the same formula as he did to do my math for my truck. So huge shout out to Engineering Explained. Thank you for all the videos that you do. They're a really cool channel. If you're into math kind of automotive stuff, go check them out. So here is all the information on my drivetrain that I have from Chevy on the ZR2. Notable numbers here are our torque is 275 and it makes that torque at 4,000 RPMs. The gear ratios in the transmission, first gear has a ratio of 4.61, eighth gear has a ratio of 0.66, and our final drive ratio in the rear axle is 3.42. We also have a, have a stock curb weight of 4,758 pounds. So here you can see the diagram that I've made for the truck. I'm gonna skim through all of the math that I do really quickly. Um, I know there's a lot of you that might not be interested in engineering the same way, way I am. If you are interested, go back to that Engineering Explained video. He has a 15 minute video on all the math that he did and I'm doing the same math with the numbers for my truck. So we're starting at the peak torque that the engine puts out shown in TE. We're going to multiply that by the gear ratio, GR, that's the gear that the transmission is in. That goes down the drive shaft to the final drive ratio. That's what we're going to be changing and we're going to show the difference from the stock drive ratio to the new drive ratio that we've put in that rear axle and how that affects the force or the power that the vehicle has. So once we have that, that torque at the axle, once we're multiplied by that drive ratio, we get our torque at the axle shown in TW. We use the radius of the tire to translate our torque at the axle into the force that the vehicle is able to push forward with. We're then going to account for the weight of the vehicle and get a theoretical G's that this truck would be able to accelerate with. Theoretical, obviously, because this is all on paper and there's a lot of real life variables that we're not accounting for in our math. So here's the math for torque at the wheel shown in first gear and in eighth gear. In first gear with the stock gear ratio, you have 275 from the engine multiplied by first gear of 461 times the axle ratio of 342 and you get 4,335 foot pounds of torque at the axle. With the new gear ratio, we have 275, 461, and 456 at the axle for a total of 5,780 foot-pounds of torque at the axle. So now to solve for FW, we're taking that stock number of torque at 4337. The diameter of the stock tire in feet is 2.55, and it gets us 1,700. With the stock gear ratio and the big tires that I had, that number goes down to 1554. So there you see a 9% decrease in power from the bigger tires. Pretty significant when you're actually driving it. And with the 456 gears, I'm now back up to 2072 or a 22% increase from stock. And how that force translates to acceleration in Gs with the stock tires and gears, it would have theoretically been able to accelerate at 0.36 Gs. After adding the bigger tires on the stock gears, that would have been down to 0.31. And with the tires and new gears, it's up to 0.41 Gs, obviously still theoretically, and clearly pickup trucks are not very fast. 
All right, guys, so filling up to start the uh, miles per gallon loop. And we're gonna do the TFL approved 30 second test method. So we'll wait for it to click and then we'll time 30 seconds and give it one more click. All right, there it is. We started the timer and now we'll wait 30 seconds. All right, so there's 30 seconds. One more click. And now we're topped off, ready to start our loop. All right, so part of why I picked the loop that I did is we'll actually get, going through Milwaukee here, we'll get quite a bit of freeway that's a 50 mile an hour. And one thing that a lot of people have all agreed on on the forums is that with how not aerodynamic this truck is, it gets a lot better gas mileage at slower speeds than it does at 70 or 75 miles an hour. Um, so we'll get a good section of 55 here. We'll probably even hit some traffic in Milwaukee, so it might be slower than that. But uh, we'll get a good section of, of 55 and 60, and then once we get out of town, it'll open up to 70, and I'll go 70 for a ways. I'll monitor the, the, uh, the real-time MPG to kind of show you guys what I'm seeing, but there's gonna be a significant difference just from what I've noticed, I can get about 18 or 19 if I'm going 50 to 60 miles an hour, but once I go to 65 or 70, it drops down to probably about 15. Um, so I definitely think if gas mileage is what you're after, I think the 410 gears will get better gas mileage than these will, because these just run a, a high RPM in eighth gear, but they have a lot of power and uh, I think this truck really benefits from that power because, I mean, the 343 gears and the tire size that they had on it was designed for a, a Colorado Z71 that has an air dam and is much more aerodynamic, and they didn't adjust the power for pushing a vehicle that pushes a lot more wind and is a lot less aerodynamic. So I like having the power there, but if you're really after fuel economy, 410s might be the better gears, but who knows? We'll see what we get. And just as I feared, traffic. So, Yay. I don't know. I think Milwaukee traffic's pretty bad. Everybody tries to tell me that it's not. I get that it's not Chicago, it's not LA, but Maybe I was just, I was spoiled growing up in Oregon. I, I didn't deal with this. And now living here, it, it annoys me. But I'm going 10 miles an hour, so. All right, so we are now finally going 70. I am 25 miles into the MPG loop. And I just now am able to go 70. That's how much traffic we just sat through. Anyways, I'm seeing 16 on the computer right now. Not sure how accurate it is, but I would believe that's that's close. I think it's gonna start going down here. I'm, uh, I got the cruise set right at 70 now. All right, so I know another thing you guys were asking about was with such a low gear ratio, what RPMs do you run when you go fast? And you can see right here, 70 miles an hour, is right about 2200 rpm honestly it's high but pushing this much wind i think it needs that much power so i don't think it would be able to use another gear if it had it i mean if this was if this was seventh gear and i still had an eighth gear like i did stock this is what i was seeing when it was stock gears was it was sitting in sixth gear at 2200 instead of sitting in eighth gear 2200. It was the same RPMs, it was just in sixth gear because 7th and 8th didn't have enough power to push that much truck down the road anymore. So, yeah, it's kind of high. Let me know what you think. Alright guys, one other thing I wanted to show you is the new 0 to 60 time with the trifecta tune. This thing is even faster. Ready? Let's go.
turning 34s and it puts up 7.53. If you have bigger tires or aftermarket gears, either one, get the trifecta tune. It's absolutely worth it. So I really wanted to make a full loop and fill up at the gas station that I started at because that's the most accurate way to account for any elevation. But coming home, the entire freeway was closed. I have no idea what happened, but it literally turned to straight stopped traffic and said freeway closed ahead. So I had to get off and I'm just gonna fill up here We've already gone uh, 56 miles, so unfortunately I'm not filling up at the gas station that I started at, but I'll give you guys a pretty good idea for what we're getting. All right, so there's the first click. Now another 30 seconds. home and I'm going to use Google Maps to track exactly what roads I took so that we get a precise there. I don't want to rely on the accuracy of the truck. So I'll get home, I'll measure it out, and I'll calculate for 3799. Alright, so here you have it guys. I used Google Maps. Came out to 61 miles. You divide that by 3.799 gallons for a total of exactly 16 miles per gallon on this loop. This is about what I've been seeing daily driving as well, between 15 and 16. So, now you know. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't yet entered to win the Bubba Rope that I'm giving away, there's three days left for that giveaway on my first 456 years video. Go check that out, get entered to win. I'm gonna be announcing the winner in the next video. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks.